Hi friends, Anand again. So in this video, I'm going to learn um, how to uh, call a REST API from for from a React Native application. So so this is my login screen over here under components. So sign in with Google and Facebook. So I just mentioned sign in with uh, GF, G for Google and F for Facebook. So can see over here there are two uh, touchable opacity buttons so one is for the Facebook the other one is for the Google so uh, if, we, if we go inside the Facebook or Google so you can see over here first we are validating with the Google sign-in method where uh, we would receive the access token and everything once we validated the user is a valid user uh, who's having a valid Gmail uh, account? Then uh, we are calling our REST API uh, using um, you know the ES6 uh, asyncs and fetch uh, functions. So you can see over here. Um, so once the do login is successful, then we are navigating to the proper appropriate landing page. So in my case, the tabs is the um the landing page for my application so uh, you can see the network service so network service is over here uh, under network folder i just created two um, component so one is the request service um, and this request service has been used in the network service so request service uh, has uh, two functions one is for get method the other one is for the post method and uh, you can see you know uh, it's a simple get so we are simply using the fetch and uh, the response will be returned as a json and as well as for post uh, we are using a method called post and then they just uh, i just written this uh, in a generic manner so we just need to pass the url and the uh, parameters of if it's a post method so and the network service is to handle uh, different methods uh, which which will be used to buy our react native application so in our case uh, it's a do login so do login is uh, a post call post method so we will call this endpoint uh, the base url is uh, my local bixi api url and then um, you know we are passing the url and the data is nothing but whatever the data we got from google uh, authentication so i already created a uh, Spring Boot REST API. So, uh, if you want to learn about Spring Boot, uh, you can uh, visit the official site. Uh, the reason I decided Spring Boot is really robust and uh, powerful to use uh, with the Spring Framework, as well as it has its embedded uh, uh, web server. So, we don't need to deploy the final uh, war file into a uh, you know a server which is already installed we don't need to install a web server so because the web server is embedded within the jar file so so you can see over here the palm.xml um, in the palm.xml um, the target is the packaging is a jar file and then uh, the dependency you can see um, the Spring Boot web is the embedded uh, web server which I'm using and we just need to run this uh, jar file and uh, that, that's what I did over here so you can see over here I'm just uh, run this command java jar and then the jar file so it has its inbuilt uh, uh, server which is running on a specific port uh, which we configured you can see over here the embedded server is a tomcat server over here and the port is 2017 so the port can be configured under the src main resources application dot properties and over here you can configure whatever you want to configure uh, all these jp related stuffs and uh, for the backend database i'm using the uh, postgresql so 
So this is a cool and powerful um, um, SQL. Uh, you know, so that's why I'm using Postgres SQL. So, uh, so I already created the the tables for user profile. Um, so let me show you the table structure over here. So I just created a new database called Vixi, and then uh, inside the database I created a schema called Vixi schema, which is B schema, and then I just created some tables over here uh, for user profile. So this is my table, and um, if you view some data for some first hundred rows, you would see you know all this information has been you know uh, inserted when I try to log in. So this is what we are doing. And uh, we also save the access token and all the stuff. Okay, cool. So you see over here, um, by default, it has an application Java. That's the main thing. So it's a standalone server. So so the Big C application is the one which will uh, run the entire application. So we need to configure the component scan. Uh, folder the entity scan which is the Pojo class for your ORM I'm using JPA I'm not using uh, Hibernate I'm using plain JPA and then uh, I'm enabling the JPA repository to this folder and uh, the Spring Boot application the base package is this one so you can see my packages is like this com.agl.bigc something like that and then I have created a uh, controller rest controller this are rest controller this is what you have seen in my uh, react native application over here right user profile so when we invoke this specific endpoint so this um, rest api will be invoked and then this is a post method uh, you can see over here this is consuming application json uh, request method is post and then we are saving the profile so uh, so this is like a plain Java, vanilla Java using JPA. So I'm just checking whether whatever the username we received is already exists or not. If it is exists, then update the existing data. Otherwise, persist a new data. So that's what I'm doing. And um, it's very simple um, to, to run the Spring Boot application. Let me kill this process. And then let me show you how it's running. Control C. Okay, I just killed it. Uh, so now you just need to run the Maven command. Run as Maven build. Cool. So we got the jar file. So you could see the target jar file. So this is the jar file we're gonna run it right now. So in order to run, right click, uh, run as run as Spring Boot app, or you can simply run the jar file using the Java space minus jar command. So it will use the default port number, whatever the port number I have configured in the application.properties. And make sure you configure all your database related stuff properly in the application properties as well. Here we go. So the application is started uh, using the port 2017 so if I log in using Facebook so you would see the Facebook will invoke over here you can see the logs has been printed right like so so the save user profile started so this is the username I got and then it's checking the Hibernate sequences yeah so that's it so this is the uh, a way to configure your react native to call any uh, rest api thank you very much for watching if you like please like if you if you want to comment please comment thank you very much